Welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Imperium, your guide to the first five issues of your Imperium subscription. I'm Peachy. And I'm Louise, and this is episode two. And we're going to be looking at everything that comes in the second issue of Imperium, and that means we'll be discovering the secrets of the Space Marines and the Necrons. And I'll be building the Necron warrior models that come with issue two, and taking you through the first steps of painting these menacing androids. Then we'll both play a game where we put what we found out in the first video into practice again using our new models. First, let's take a look at the awesome Warhammer miniatures you get with issue two. There are three new models to add to your Necron army, Necron Warriors. We'll be learning all about who they are in a minute. You'll also get your first paint, Rune Lord Brass. And this is a great base color for your Necron models. After all, they have metal bodies. There's also a brush for you to use, and we'll be looking at how to paint and take care of your new brush later in this episode. But first, Let's find out what you'll learn about the Necrons and the Space Marines in issue two. Necron warriors are the most basic soldiers of the ancient Necron dynasties. Like the overlords, they have bodies made of self-repairing living metal, but their minds have not survived 60 million years of sleep. They are close to automata, marching in lockstep and following the orders of the Necron royalty who lead them. Necron warriors are armed with devastating gauss weapons, which strip their targets apart atom by atom. That sounds like a horrible way to die. The 41st millennium is full of those, as you'll discover throughout the Imperium series. As well as a profile of Necron warriors, you'll find a battle record that lets you name them and remember notable achievements from the battles they fight. There's also a look at one of the dynasties of the Necrons, the royal lineages that rule the remnants of the ancient empire. In this issue, you'll find out about the Zarekin dynasty, which is commanded by the greatest Necron monarch of all, the Silent King. For those of us who are staunch defenders of the Imperium, there's also information about the Ultramarines, one of the finest space marine chapters in the galaxy. Once you finish reading all about the Necrons and the Ultramarines, it's time to build your new models. Get your Necron Warriors sprue and clippers and get ready to build. The Necron Warriors come in several parts each which you need to push together to build them. Components 1 to 5 build one model, 6 to 10 make a second and the third uses 11 to 15. The components for each model look similar so be sure to keep each model's parts separate from the others. Let's start with components 1 to 5 which build model 1 as shown in your magazine. Start by clipping them out the sprue, remember that we use the flat side of the clippers and get it as close to the model as we can. Looking at the magazine, we start with parts one, two, and three. The body, both arms, complete with the model's gun. Carefully line up the pegs and sockets and push the components together, applying gentle pressure until the parts are sitting flush with each other. Now take part four and follow the same process, pushing the chest onto the body, finally adding the face, which is component five. We now have an almost complete neck and warrior. It just needs to go on its base. You'll see it as a peg on one foot, just line this up with a hole on the base and your first Necron Warrior is ready to march to battle. All that remains now is to follow the step-by-step -step instructions in your magazine and put together your other two models. When you're done, you'll have a unit of three Necron Warriors ready to reclaim their ancient empire once they have some paint on them. Now that your Necron Warriors are built, it's time to get both them and your Royal Warden from Issue 1 looking a little more metallic with some paint. Grab the Rune Lord Brass Paint and the brush you got with Issue 2 and let's get started. Painting your models is one of the most rewarding parts of the Warhammer 40,000 hobby. It turns them from a collection of plastic models into an army that's ready to conquer the battlefields of the 41st millennium. Don't worry if painting your models sounds a little bit intimidating. It's really good fun and will help you along the way. Before you get started, you'll need a couple of other things for painting as well as your models, paint and brush. First up, water. Grab a spare glass or mug, fill it with cold water. You can also pick up a handy water pot from your local Warhammer store or Games Workshop website, which is designed to hold water and give you a nice resting place for your brush. The water is used to keep your brush wet and to help the paint flow. It's also really handy for keeping your brush clean so that it stays in good condition. We'll also use some paper towel to help with that. It's also handy to have a palette. This is used to thin your paints with water. Again, you can pick up a palette pad from your local Warhammer store. At the moment, an old ceramic plate works nicely. There's one other thing that you'll want in your painting area, a light to see the models clearly. Natural light is best, so if you can paint during the day under a window, that's perfect. Otherwise, a desk lamp works really well. Right, time to leave you to paint your Necrons. Have fun! I will.
Let's get started. Grab your pot of rune or brass and let's give it a shake. Shaking the pot makes sure the paint is nicely mixed together and gets it ready for use. After you've given it a good shake, open it up, pushing the lid back carefully. If you open it for the first time, it might require a bit of pressure as there's a seal to be broken. Push the lid back until it clicks on the tab at the back of the pot. This helps the lid to stay open so you can use it easily. Sit the pot down somewhere in reach where you're not going to accidentally knock it over and get your brush. Hold your brush between your thumb and forefinger like this. There's an illustration in the magazine if you want a reminder at any point. Wet the brush, then using the reservoir of paint on the inside of the lid, load the bristles with paint like so. Be careful not to get any near or on the ferrule. That's the metal part that holds the bristles, as this can ruin your brush over time. If you're using a palette, transfer the paint from your bristles onto there, and add a tiny drop of water to thin it slightly like this. About one part water to four parts paint is perfect. Today we're going to use our new Rune Law Brass paint to apply a base coat to the Necron Warriors and the Royal Warden. A base coat is the first step in painting a model and gives a nice base for other paints to stick to. Rune Law Brass is perfect as an undercoat for Necrons because of their metallic nature. Start by painting a thin coat of your watered down Rune Law Brass over the model's body. If you get some paint on the gun or base, that's fine. You'll be going over them with other colours in future issues. Don't worry that the plastic shows through at first. You'll be giving it more coats once this is dry. It's better to paint on several thin coats than to apply paint too thickly and risk obscuring the details. Because they're so detailed, our models have a bunch of recesses and difficult to reach parts. You need to hold the model at different angles to make sure you cover them all. It's usually easier to rotate the model than your brush to get all those hard to reach places. Once your Necron Warrior has a coat of Rune or Brass on it, it should look something like this. Set it aside to dry while you do the same to the other models. This is a good time to clean your brush as well. You want to do this regularly to stop paint drying in the bristles. Once you put a single coat on each of the three Necron Warriors, the first should be dry enough for a second coat. You'll see that after the second coat, there's much less grey plastic visible. A third coat should see the models fully covered and looking great with a smooth, even finish. Remember to clean your brushes often. With all the Warriors base coated, it's time to move on to the Royal Warden. For this model, you want to paint the body, leaving the gun, cloak and base as bare plastic. Build the paint up in layers the same way as the Warriors. This model has lots of fine details, so remember to thin your paints and clean your brush often. Hey Peachy, they're looking great and I can't wait to start painting my Space Marines in the next video. Thanks Louise, and I'm looking forward to adding another colour to them, which I'll be doing in video 4. But for now, it's time to play a game. You'll be putting your new Necron Warriors to work this time against the Primaris Lieutenant you got with issue 1. Remember how we played last time? We took turns to move our models and shoot. We're going to do the same thing again, but this time with the new Necron Warriors instead of the Royal Warden. Spread out your battle mat and make sure your dice, wound markers and range ruler are handy, along with your data sheets from the magazine. Remember, you'll need to refer to these as you play. You don't need any objective markers for this mission. The Space Marine's objective is simple. Kill all three of the Necron Warriors. The Necrons need to move one warrior off the Space Marine's edge of the battle map. How fast do they move? They have a five inch move on their data sheet. I should be able to kill all three before they reach my edge then. Well, maybe. We've got a new rule to use in this game, advance. If you choose to advance a model, it can't shoot in its turn, but gets to move further. Well, that changes things. Let's get started and see if my heroic Primaris Lieutenant can prevail. I get to go first this time. Let's see if I can remember. First you move, six inches for your space beam, right? That's right, I'm going to move him straight forward and try and block the nearest Necron. And then you'll shoot one of them, I suppose? Nope, actually, I'll shoot two of them. <laughs> if a weapon can fire multiple shots like my Primaris Lieutenant's Neo Volkite pistol, it can target different models with each shot. Okay then, roll it against the nearest warrior. What do you need to roll? It's a two plus because he's an expert shot. <laughs> an expert shot. <laughs> He'll make up for it with the second shot. Here it goes! Ah oh, yes! Now your warrior needs to save or take a wound. Let's check the data sheet and Necron Warrior's save is 4 plus. I can do that. Ooh, so close. I guess I still have all three warriors to worry about. And now it's the Necron's turn. Two of my warriors are going to advance and the one closest to you will move normally and then shoot. Well that sounds bad for me. How do you advance? It's easy. Before the model moves, you roll a dice and add the amount you roll to the distance they move. Now that you know how to shoot and advance, follow the steps in your magazine until one side completes their objective. 
That's all for this video, but we'll be back to guide you through the next issue of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium. That's right, with issue three, you'll get a set of Space Marine Assault Intercessors who use chain swords, which are literally chainsaw swords up close. You'll also get a new paint, McCrag Blue, to start painting those Space Marines. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to do just that, as well as how to build your Assault Intercessors. You'll also have another game to play where you'll fight in close combat for the first time. And there's lots more to learn about the galaxy as well. You'll find out about the Necron Tomb Worlds and the terrors of the Dark Imperium, among other things. And remember, if you've not subscribed to Warhammer 40,000 Imperium yet, you can do so on the website and get regular deliveries of models, paints, scenery and magazines, as well as awesome subscription gifts. Check it out and we'll see you soon for our next video.